Hey, two pound trigger pull here. I want to give you a quick overview about the Hammerly or Humarex 850 Air Magnum CO2 powered air rifle. And then I want to give you some uh, scope cam footage and generally uh, some uh, uh, shooting footage with this uh, air rifle. This rifle weighs only about 2.5 kilograms without scope and CO2 cartridge and is only about one meter long. So it's very lightweight and compact. The stock is uh, plastic or synthetic with a rubber butt plate and an ambidextrous uh, cheek rest. So this rifle can be used for uh, left-handed shooters and right-handed shooters. The pistol grip is checkered as well as the force stock. So it's a very good feeling when you hold this rifle in the hands. The stock feels a little bit cheap, but uh, not too much. It's uh, right in the middle of cheap and uh, uh, comfort, I would uh, say. The trigger guard is also part of the stock. So it's uh, plastic, plastic trigger. The receiver is made of zinc die cast. The charging handle is steel. The barrel is also steel and blued. The barrel comes from Lothar Walzer. Lothar Walzer is well known for very good and accurate barrels. You have the safety at the rear of the receiver. You can operate the safety either manually by pushing it out or by cocking the rifle if you pull back on the charging handle, then the rifle is operating the safety automatically. The trigger has no failed let off point, so it's just one smooth motion to the rear. So it's not a very good trigger, but it's not a bad trigger for this uh, type of rifle. Just let me show it when I cock the rifle. Now you can see the trigger just moves to the rear without any let off points so you don't feel when the rifle you can't really feel when the rifle is going off so you have uh, to do some guesswork but as i said for a rifle for this kind it isn't a bad trigger at all the rifle also comes with iron sights or true grew sights with a red front side and a green rear side and it really gives you a great side picture so the uh, the iron sights or true glue sights for this rifle are great and the co2 cartridge has place in the four stock, as you can see, you can either fit a 88 gram CO2 cartridge or two 12 gram CO2 cartridges with an adapter. Before the shooting, I just want to show you two of the features of the 850M Magnum Air Rifle. You can also mount a scope on this 11mm scope rail here, which is integrated in the receiver. You just put the scope on it. Slide it on. And tighten the screws and you have a mounted scope on your 850M Magnum. You can also use a bipod with this four stock adapter here with the Picatinny rail. You just have to switch this cover here, switch out the cover and you can use a bipod with this rifle. Before I do the uh, scope shooting, I want to show you how the rifle performs with the iron sights and also show you the operation and function of this rifle without any added uh, extras like a scope or uh, bipod. To load the rifle with this eight round drum magazine, you pull the charging handle back. Now the rifle is also automatically on safe. Then you have to push the magazine release forward so you can push into the magazine from the left side all the way through and then pull the magazine release forward now the magazine is locked and you can push the charging handle forward with a bit of force now the magazine 
gets aligned if it's necessary or rotates and also loads a pallet into the chamber. Now all you have to do now is to push the charging handle down. Now the rifle is completely locked and loaded. Now you have to disengage the safety and you can also start shooting. And I have uh, three targets down there, two tin cans and one paper target. I want to show you the accuracy freehand standing with this rifle, iron sights only, and do some plinking just for uh, fun. So you can see a little bit of this fine Humorex air rifle. Okay, first the tin cans. After each shot, cock the rifle again and you have to disengage the safety. Cocking again and now the paper target. If I'm any good. Five shots. And the last one. Okay. This wasn't the best shooting I have done, but better than none. Oh, let me zoom in so you can see. Hopefully this doesn't look too bad. Just let me retrieve the target for you. Just a moment. Just before I retrieve the target, I just want to show you the iron sights again. So they're pretty good and pretty visible also in low light conditions. Okay, now I've set up a steel ringer target and one tin can at 30 meters. And you can see it right about here, I guess. Uh, hopefully you can see this. So now I try to hit the uh, two targets down there, down range uh, at 30 meters and demonstrate you a little bit of this uh, rifle. So again, first the tin can. Hopefully I can hit it. I have to hold over. I hit it. Maybe I can hit the bottom of the can. I hit the bottom. Okay, now the uh, steel ring are target. Ah, it's a little bit windy. And I think it's the last one. Ah, one more. This was the last one, I guess. Yeah, okay. I hit the tin can two, three times and the steel target two times, so it isn't this bad. Now I give you the uh, scope shooting footage. Now I have set up the paper target at 30 meters and also a can of shaving cream for your viewing pleasure. And I will be shooting with JSB exacts 4.53 millimeters and see how accurate they are at this distance, even though this is a pretty low powered air rifle with uh, under seven joules or five foot pounds.
Okay, now the paper target at 30 meters first, rested with scope. It's pretty windy today and the scope isn't zeroed exactly. But I try to show you what this rifle is capable. I will do all eight shots. Oh, this one went far away from the group. Okay, that's it. This is a grouping I got and uh, this one isn't a pellet. This is a ricocheted pellet. Those are the eight shots here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can pretty much cover them up with a tin of pellets. It isn't the best grouping for this rifle because it's pretty windy and it's low powered. But if you have the uh, 11 foot pound configuration of the 850R Magnum and maybe caliber 2.2 then this uh, windy condition wouldn't be a problem. So this uh, pretty much is the accuracy of uh, this rifle under these conditions. And a little bit smaller than a tin of pellets but I guess it isn't the best uh, result you can uh, get from this rifle. Okay, here's now a little bit of uh, scope cam footage, or scope footage. This isn't really a scope cam, but uh, you get the idea. This is the Nikon ProStuff uh, Target EFR scope. It's basically a duplex uh, reticle with a small dot in the center for target shooting. And let me try to hit the uh, shaving cream can. Okay, second try. can't really see. I guess I have to hold a little bit to the right. Yes, that was it. Oh, I have made a mess. Let me try and hit it again. Yeah, hit it again. I will retrieve the uh, can to see how the uh, penetration was to show you guys. <laughs> Messy.
Okay, here's now our 30 meters uh, shaving cream plinking target. You can see the entrance wound and also a little bit penetration on the back. The pellet didn't get all the way through, but uh, for a low powered uh, rifle this isn't that bad, I guess. And here's the hit, the dent from the second shot, as you can see. And that's it. And this is the 850 Air Magnum rifle with the Nikon Pro Stuff Target EFR scope. It's a good scope. What I forget to tell you is that the trigger is adjustable. The uh, travel distance before the uh, imaginary breaking point is adjustable with this uh, screw. It isn't the best trigger, but isn't also the uh, worst trigger I have encountered. And this one makes uh, pretty much fun. If you live in a country where you can get more power, then I would recommend it. But um, in my opinion, it's uh, better to have uh, little more powerful spring, a little bit more powerful spring air rifle than this one. Uh, in 5.5 foot-pounds or in this uh, 7 joule configuration uh, you get uh, 300 usable shots out of 188 gram CO2 cartridge. With the 12 or 11 foot-pound version or configuration I guess you would get around uh, 100, 150 usable shots out of the uh, 88 gram CO2 cartridge. This isn't the worst rifle with the worst trigger, but it isn't the most accurate rifle I ever had, so I don't know, you decide. Personally, I wouldn't buy this in uh, this uh, low-powered uh, configuration.